my idea this time was to run a long line through a block at the bow, bring it back and do a rolling hitch on the drogue and then, and then tow the drogue forward. That's what Trevor does. Yeah. Lovely idea. It, uh, two rolling hitches in the series do not work. Two pressing knots do not work. Nothing will stick to this. Mm. The only way it worked was on the, on the, on the uh, splice here where the, where the line becomes larger. And I just had to go back to the old old way of you know firing up the engine and back down on the boat a little bit, yeah. which is you know not great. So did any I, other with it? So yeah, I did actually write it. about this about a year you ago. Did. Oh. Yeah, because I, I was starting to advocate for Dyneema, but I did have a, exactly that worry. Came up with two ideas, but I haven't tried either of them. Okay. First one is why don't we just make the first section of the drogue um, Dyneema, but with a polyester, you know, it's halyard line with a with poly cover. With a cover. Yeah. Well, uh, then how would you... You, I mean, you mean the, the... Yeah, you mean this section here. Yeah. Yeah, right. Got it. Yeah. I mean, you can bring in the first section by having a retrieval line. Right. That's what we, we do. On, uh, that's how what we tested on Morgan's Cloud is right. a retrieval line. Right. Um, the other thought I had... No, 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 no. How, where, does your, where do you attach the retrieval line? At the at the joint. At but, the bridle. At the... Uh, where the bridle Right. So that's what to, I... Yeah, this, yeah. Okay, I do the same so thing. And that gets us to the winch. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what we do. Um... The other thought I had, and I don't, I'm not sure I like it as much, <laughs> but one could, um, and I don't see, well, I'm not sure I should say that, but it's easy to Brummel splice a loop, I think, um, um, uh, into uh, the main line, the first section. So you just have every 20 feet or however often you need them, you just have a little loop Brummel spliced in there. And, uh, you know, you bring it in tie a line to it, take it forward, and you've got Lovely. the Trevor solution. Love it, love it. Because yeah. I came up with exactly that worry, so it's great to have it confirmed by oh, somebody who knows. Yeah, it, it absolutely, I tried really hard, because it would be, taking the cones around a winch is yeah. not fun. I've run, you see, I, I've run into all these problems using Dianema shore fasts in the north. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. So, that's, yeah. you know, that's kind of triggered this yeah. this worry. Yeah. Um, now, if, if we did that, um, like the loop, which would you prefer based on your experience, the uh, the Brummel spliced loops, or would you think which do you think would be better? I would like the loops because you're. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't stop falling when I get this in, right? This is only the first. Right. Less than a third. Uh, so I w I'm assuming I don't know what a Brummel splice is. So. Uh, it's Brummel. Those are Brummel splices. It's the splice you use. Yeah, to make um, to splice uh, this kind of um, single plat. Dyneema. I see. Okay. I'm I'm a terrible splicer. I suck. Yeah. I... So I tend to I use what I call a Maloney splice. I give it to my good friend Jay Maloney to do. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could do that splice every well, you know, my length of boat is about 45 feet. So like you know every 45 feet, that's a lot of. Yeah. That's a lot. So you'd have to order it specific to. The your, boat. Your Absolutely. Boat. Because if I could. It would just be. It would be. It would change things dramatically if I could just, you know, run the line through a block at the bow and bring it back here, so that I'm only ever cranking on line, not on the. On That's the what Trevor does. Because it, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because taking these around, taking these around the winch isn't bad. Taking them through the claw, it just. It's we we slow. do it. We do it on Morgan's Cloud. Really? Uh, we in our practicing. We've never had to do it. But retrieval was the first thing I looked at this thing. And I said retrieval is going to suck. And, yeah. and our boat's twenty. You know, yeah, twice yeah. the weight of this boat. Right. So I thought, oh my God, yeah, this right. is and two of us. Yeah. You know, and we're not not exactly spring chickens. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you, you took it to the winch. Took it to the winch, but it's two of us, yeah. one tails. Yeah. And then the other thing we did is we just bought one of those huge Makita um, uh, drills and put a bit in it that goes on the top of the winch. Oh. And it oh. takes <laughs> it takes three back because because we tried. Don't you need leverage on that thing? Now? Well, you got leverage. Really? The damn things. I don't know, 24 inches long or something. Okay. <laughs> the leverage you got. <laughs> and it takes us three batteries to bring it in. And really? we tested it by motoring ahead at four knots, which is probably more load than you would have retrieving. Okay. You know, because it was steady. And what we found was that Phyllis and I, even on our big three-speed primaries, you know, we'd get, we, we had 40 feet, 50 feet in, and we were all done. Yeah. We would just hang, we just sit in the cockpit going, okay, that's not going to work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so, tough. It's tough work. So and we got this. Um, this is the interesting point that Dave makes when uh, the guy who designed the shark drug, he says, you know, you, not just the load, the load issues of something like this on a fiberglass boat. It's the thought process that 
the skipper is going to go through knowing how hard it is to deploy and how hard it is to get back in. So he's going to wait till the last possible moment until this is like the only thing left to do. And he says, this is the joy of the shark drug. It's just like this, it's tiny. Yeah. You just throw it over, the, you know, like, yeah. there you're done. Um, but if you which, end up upside down. Well, but, uh, right. You, you and so uh, uh, the argument, the, the counter argument there is I need something that yeah. will take extreme situations. Yeah. And I don't think a shark is designed to do that. And he it's even just, says that, right? The, the, the designer. Uh, the I, shark I don't know. Is. I would not want to put those words in his mouth, but I got the clear impression from reading his instruction manual that he didn't know what the effect would be of extreme seas. Uh, it's just not something. I mean, you see the pictures of the way he tested it, right? He's he's, he's from San Diego. Yeah. Uh, nothing ever happening in San Diego. They go to big powerboat and tow the thing at like twelve knots. You know, yeah. that was the only way you'd get data on it. So it's yeah. it's. And that's not what happens no. in a uh, in a in a uh, no seaway, right? in a seaway. Right. So you know yeah. better than I do. So uh, yeah. it's a good piece of equipment, but I, I you know this is really, uh, like I said when you first got on the boat, it's like it's my it's my safety valve. Yeah. Uh, for when I when I have a, can't figure out what to do next this is what i do next so and that's really and the other thing is too isn't it it's it's the exhaustion factor yeah. you know the fact you know people will say oh i'm going to sail through this i'm going to do this i'm going to do that and and i get pretty tired you're young way younger than i am but you know it's 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 wearing it's really tough even if you're not doing anything yeah right you're just sitting below and the boat's taking care of itself it's still wearing because you, yeah. you're on always yeah. like something yeah. could happen next yeah, yeah. Very, very much so absolutely much so. so i want something that you know, I can just do, and uh, then I yeah. don't have to undo it. Well, I, uh, I've i always wrestled with both deployment and retrieval, uh, but the ideas you've talked about today would make the deployment a lot easier. Uh, so that, I, I, that's a good conversation. Great. Because I'm one of those guys who is going to wait until the last moment. Yeah. Right? And, uh, well, I've learned a huge amount. Um, so away with the retrieval, I, I, actually, you can look, you, you pretty handy probably better than I am um, at the, you know, I just suck as a splicer but um, if you look up Brummel splices I think you might be able to figure out how to just get some lighter dynamer and splice it into that line and I can't I mean you're always worried well, about I, doing these things because of the law of unintended consequences totally. but, <laughs> but I can't see anything there well that's usually the problem right <laughs> that's why it's unintended right <laughs> well, why Tony and I talked about this because it was the first thing I chatted about. The first time I used it, it was like, wow, this is a real bitch to get back in the boat. Uh, why wouldn't we run a retrieval line all the way out to the chain? Does it foul the cones? Um, Tony actually shared that with me, and I've got it on the site. Does, did he try it? He didn't. Yes. Oh, he did. He and Corin tried it several times. Oh. The, uh, the actual problem was the deployment that really scared them both. Oh, interesting. Trying to deploy two lines. Uh, yeah. It's, and then it's tricky enough already with the tagline on the exactly, on the and ground. then adding to the, to the thought that maybe over time it could wrap, it, it could wrap and yeah. slowly diminish the drag of the drogue. No, so okay. it, at the end of it, and he tried it several times, him and Karin. Okay. And at the end of it, he said, uh, "I had I'm sitting in this cockpit ten years ago, and he said, don't do that.' Okay. And you know when Tony says don't do something, yeah, yeah. I kind of yeah, go, he's... yeah.